Okay, um, good morning. I'm calling to order uh, public meeting number 74 of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission at 10 a.m. here already, Wednesday, April 15th. Uh, this meeting is being conducted uh, virtually given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from the global coronavirus pandemic. Governor Baker um, has issued an order to provide limited relief from certain provisions of the open meeting law, and we've been able to take advantage of that in this case. Um, <clears throat> before we get started, I just wanted to uh, confirm that we have a quorum. So, um, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Hi, good morning, everybody. And Commissioner Stebbins. Hi, good morning. Good morning, and um, of course I'm here. So we have a quorum. I want, want to, of course, uh, thank each of you. Many of our staff members are participating today. Um, I want to thank um, all of you uh, for your individual contributions. And again, recognize the, that with the exceptional and agile assistance of the IT department, the uh, Gaming Commission has able, been able to work really very efficiently remotely. And we acknowledge, of course, Karen Wells' um, leadership in, in keeping that um, efficiency going. We are a strong team. Most importantly, um, it is, you cannot avoid how you have continued in your um, responsibilities in, in doing so with great respect and with compassion. And for that, I am terribly appreciative. Thank you too, of course, for doing your part by staying at home. On behalf of my fellow commissioners, we give thanks, of course, for our state's leadership, public health experts, and all of our frontline heroes, most notably the remarkable medical professionals and all those who support their life-saving efforts at our extensive uh, medical facilities here in the Boston area and across the Commonwealth. We also thank our first responders. We know that they're going through a great deal right now and our hearts are with them our military um, personnel and vets who are um, right there with the, uh, the medical professionals and the first responders um, assuming great responsibilities. And then of course, all of those who are ensuring our, our supply line, allowing us to stay home safely. Before we continue, I am gonna ask Commissioner Cameron if she would like to share the significant news that we have regarding one of our very own members of the GEU. Oh, us yesterday. I the soon, you would to, like be, to, the soon to be detective lieutenant um, Tim Babin, which is, uh, by the way, quite a, uh, a step up in that organization. It's you know there are many many lieutenants, but to to get to that next level really means you are in charge of a very significant um, uh, unit in the in the state police, and it's our loss because Tim started with us very early on. Um, and he he actually uh, oversaw each of the three openings um, of our of our three casinos, and he went there. He not only learned himself, but then he continued to, along with uh, his uh, teammates, he he selected an amazing team to go to each casino. And um, I I have to say I've loved working with him. Um, he's understood very, very much the difference between a criminal investigation and a regulatory investigation. His team understands that clearly. They have treated people professionally at every level of interaction, and that is uh, a real tribute to Tim. And he's going into a very, very important to head up all the criminal investigations uh, at the Attorney General's office. So. Congratulations to Tim, and um, I know he'll do a superb job there, and it will be our loss, but of course, we support all of our people who move on to, um, to higher positions, and frankly, we, they've had great experience here with us, and he will be very well suited um, to not only look at the uh, uh, casino gaming investigations that that office takes on, but uh, all of the other investigations there. So uh, again, I can't say enough about what he's provided us as a first time for this organization and how uh, long conversations with him about the difference that he understood it clearly and um, demonstrated that leadership for many, many years for the Gaming Commission. So congrats to, to Tim Babin. Yeah, and I, I'm sure that all, all um, 
my our fellow commissioners share that. So thank you. I know many of us have been able to to write him a note. So, but it, very very exciting. Uh, but a, the good news is that we will be intersecting with with his unit. Of course, we work uh, so cooperatively with the AG's office. So. Okay. Thank you for that. Commissioner, we'll move on to item number two on today's agenda. Commissioner Stebbins. Good morning, Madam Chair. Um, in your packet, you have the meeting minutes from the March 25th agenda setting meeting. Uh, I would move their approval as always subject to any uh, typographical errors or any other non-material uh, changes. Second. Okay. Oh, great, thank you. Any questions, comments for Commissioner Stebbins and Shara? Okay, hearing none. Commissioner um, Stebbins? Oh, you've already, uh, I guess we, yeah, no, we vote. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. <laughs> Excuse me, Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. And um, I vote yes, 5 0. Thank you. Now we'll move through the agenda planning. Um, uh, Executive Director Wells? We'll start Thank with. There she is. Good morning. Hello. I hadn't spotted you yet. I'm here. Um, we'll start with number one. Um, all on, uh, on all agendas, we look for an administrative update. Right. I think that we would consider, but we don't have to have our next uh, commission meeting be next Thursday, but that is reserved on our calendars. So that would be... Um, that would be my son's 30th birthday. Um, oh, yay. <laughs> yeah, he, he will be celebrating in California without his parents this year. Um, does that look like a good date first? Is, is that what you're contemplating, uh, Karen? Yeah, I think so, unless any of the commission, I know generally that had been school vacation week. Now that's all a, you know, a, you know, change at this point. Some schools are still going through. I just wanted uh, to check with the commissioners as to their availability, but that would keep us getting back onto that regular every other week cadence, which may be appropriate right now. I, I defer to the commissioners on their schedules, though I want to be respectful. Uh, uh, each commissioner, I'm just going to check in. Does that work for you, Commissioner O'Brien? It does. They've canceled school vacation week for my kids, so I think I can keep them entertained. No. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Zuniga? Yeah, it's, it works. Uh, they have not canceled the, the vacation for my daughter. She will have vacation, but uh, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> Commissioner Cameron? Yeah, no problem at all. Commissioner Stebbins? Um, no problem. My kids may be going somewhere, but mom and dad are staying home. <laughs> wow, that's, oh, that's strategic. I'm, I'm just kidding. Stevens. Just kidding. <laughs> the backyard? <laughs> that, that would be a welcome vacation. Setting up a, 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 a fort and a tent in the backyard and having um, a, going on a camping trip might be a, a great uh, staycation idea for those who have vacation next week. All right, so we'll presume then uh, that we have 423. Moving on to item number two. Um, uh, Commissioner uh, O'Brien, you might want to chime in too. I know that there's a regulation underway. Um, uh, interim uh, Acting General Counsel Grossman. Hi, good morning, Kathy, and good morning to everybody. Thank you. Uh, my kids are doing flips on the couch right now, so if you hear any screaming, uh, everything is under control <laughs> over here. Uh, we do have uh, two items I'd just like to bring uh, to everyone's attention. The first pertains to the licensing and registration of uh, vendors and employees at the casinos. And uh, I'd like to turn it over to Commissioner Stebbins uh, to provide an overview of that one. And then there's one other that pertains to emergency action by the uh, commission that we've been working on with Commissioner O'Brien. So after um, the first, I'd like to turn to Commissioner O'Brien, if I may. So uh, Commissioner Stebbins, if, if you wouldn't mind just offering a brief overview of the first. Sure, thank you, Councillor. Um, you know, subsequent to our last meeting and the conversation around um, uh, tickets and the ability for a patron to redeem their uh, uh, their tickets uh, kind of during the suspension period, uh, Councillor Grossman, uh, Director of Licensing Curtis, and our CFAO um, 
Derek Lennon, uh, in addition to Jill and uh, Jill Griffin and Crystal, um, we've had some conversations about what we do with some of the small business vendors whose uh, license might be expiring during this suspension period, uh, whether it should be counted towards their um, uh, towards the term of their license. Uh, so my hope is, you know, for next uh, Wednesday, uh, next Thursday, we can have a memo with some of the background that uh, Todd and Bill and uh, uh, and all of us have been working on, and have something for the commission to consider. Maybe offer some relief to uh, those vendors, uh, what it will take logistically and operationally, as well as uh, assessing any financial impact. But um, uh, again, as uh, as I was saying, Councillor Grossman kind of raised this idea of following our uh, conversation around extending what would amount to the year for a ticket redemption and thinking about how that might apply to uh, licensing, licensing and registering of vendors uh, and employees. And you would be ready for that for next week? I think we can have something in the packet that'll just kind of outline all the issues and we can decide whether we want to take any action at that point or wait until the next meeting. Karen, does that work for you? Yeah, just uh, would the expectation be you'd have something to the other commissioners by say Monday, like what should I uh, do as far as coordinating with the other commissioners and making sure they are uh, briefed before Thursday? Sure. Um, Bill and Todd and I spoke this morning. We think we can have something together for the packet for Thursday, and we'll try to have that out as early as we can um, and, um, and kind of lay out what some of the options are and what some of the issues are. Uh, okay. You know, this is a tough time, as we know, for a lot of small businesses and just trying to answer their questions as to what happens if my license is expiring during the suspension period um what if i you know considering all the other paperwork that they're doing if they're pursuing sba relief and assistance uh, we just thought we might be able to extend their license out um kind of past the suspension point or at least say that it's still valid even though their license might have expired during this suspension period so uh we'll have a memo that hopefully kind of outlines all of those issues Okay, that'd be great. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for that. Thanks, Thanks. Karen. Excellent. And the second item, Todd? Yeah, thanks. So uh, we've been working with Commissioner O'Brien. Uh, uh, Carrie Teresi and I have uh, worked with her to put together some draft language relative to emergency regulations. And Commissioner O'Brien, uh, if you may, if you will, uh, sure. just offer a brief overview of that discussion. Yep. Um, just Briefly before I do that too, I just wanted to give my own congratulations to Timmy. I, I shot him a note, but I actually met Tim back in the Special Investigations Unit in the AG's office. So I have full confidence he'll, he's a great pick for there and also happy to see that we're gonna able to still benefit from dealing with him when we send cases over there. So sorry to see him go. Sorry we can't send him off in person, but I'm sure we can add that to the list of things that we're gonna do when we get to the other side of this. Um, Going to specifically um, the emergency regulations that we've been talking about that um, Todd and Carrie and I have been working on, this really came up about a month ago as we sat there and we're talking with the licensees, um, looking at the beginning of the shutdowns caused by this pandemic and looking at our statute, the various ways that um, we have the authority um, to step in in certain circumstances. And we started to think about not only this situation, but contemplating other situations that might arise in an emergency basis, be it a natural disaster or, or something specific to one licensee that doesn't affect the others. And what we really wanted to do was provide clarity, not only for us in terms of IEB and the commission, but also the licensees in terms of what to expect in those circumstances and what the process would be. And we found that we didn't think anything sufficiently covered in our regs. And so we've been working on addressing that with a specific reg that would deal with the types of emergency situations we're talking about, and then what are the mechanisms and the processes that we could go through. It's not very long. Um, it jumps off a memo that Carrie and Todd had been working on um, in the beginning to the middle of March, um, that they are going to be prepared to 
do two by twos and brief the other commissioners on as well as the draft language. We did feel like it finally got to the point where we can disseminate it and then they can go out and do the two by twos so that the rest of the commissioners can and you know people from IEB, et cetera, can ask their questions, put their comments in so we can start moving on that. Okay. Commissioner O'Brien, I really appreciate um, this work uh, while we were co contemplating all of our options as we um, <clears throat> recognize that operations would uh, need to be suspended there were just certain tools not in our toolkit that, and and i think we could have gotten there if need be and it worked out that we didn't have to but this will add the clarity that we that will serve hopefully um we'll never have to <laughs> to use them but you know maybe successors decades from now we'll we'll we'll, we'll need them but let's cross our fingers that we don't have to to use them um, except for sparingly. Right. So excellent work, Todd and, and Carrie, thank you so much. Thank you. I, um, I look forward to, um, to that two by two and um, you know, an outline. Um, just a couple of uh, questions that I can reserve for, um, for then. I, um, I think we have to be careful about substance now because um, we haven't marked up for substance, but go ahead, Commissioner Zuniga. Well, one of them, uh, is less substantive. Let me just start with that. Uh, what would we call this um, group? Is, is this emergency operations or emergency <laughs> situations? I, I believe the agenda item will be marked up authority of the commission to act in an emergency situation. And, and then it will go through detailing what emergency situation is and what the processes are. Okay, thank you. I, I'll reserve the other question. Uh, or later because um, that might be more substantive. Right, and and I think the way we could mark this up too, it might be a two, it could be um, an, the two by twos and then one meeting and then maybe ask questions and then go back a second round. Uh, you know, Karen and Commissioner O'Brien, I, I leave that to you and, and Todd, what you wanna do, it, it doesn't have to all be resolved in um, one sweep. Okay. No, it probably depends on the types of questions um, that come out of the two by twos with the other commissioners. Exactly. Agreed, Karen? Yes, and Eileen, is your, so is your vision that we would do two by twos before Thursday? Yes. Okay, got it. If that's possible. It's not very protracted. Um, I know that I spoke briefly with Kathy about it, and so she's somewhat aware of what we've been doing and what it's about. Um, okay. And so it would really be scheduling, you know, two meetings in some form with the other three commissioners. Okay. And Todd, are you going to set those up? Yeah, I can, I'll take care of it. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Okay. So two, two items. And Marianne, good morning. Uh, if this is, we're just going to keep track right now. This is all for April 23rd. We want to be really cognizant of time because I think we all know that virtual is, is intense and, and it just feels doubly long for people. So we want to be really um, uh, aware of timing. So I'm going to leave it to our timekeeper, Marianne, to, to chime in. But So those are two regulatory items. Thank you. Moving on to item number three. Uh, good morning, Alex. Dr. Lightbound. Good morning. Um, this one can be put under review. This was. Um, left over from when we thought we were going to be opening on um, April 6th. So now, um, until we know for sure when the um, harness track is going to open, we can put this item under review. Did we, um, remind me of the status, it's a, Ju a June 1st, right? Did we promise to look at this again though, before the June 1st? Yes, we said we'd um, review at the end of April, beginning of May, and that actually um, works well with the um, governor's uh, latest um, decree that goes till May 4th. So we may have some um, more information from uh, his office as to what's um, available to us at that point. So right now on these notes, we have it for 5-7 down. Um, for a potential commission meeting. Does that still make sense? Commissioner Cameron, what do you think? I think it does. Um, 
because we will certainly have clarity by then about uh, next steps in state government. Alex, do you still like that date then rather than under review so that we could give the stakeholders or do you think that's pre premature? Um, well, maybe we could just change the um, the wording. Um, the kickoff was um, originally supposed to be um, a description of how um, the racing division was gearing up for the meet and what we were doing as you know, um, with the horsemen and with um, Plainbridge Park Casino. Mm -hmm. So um, it might just be um, an update on live racing at, at PPC. Maybe that wording would be good and then yeah. to have it on that May 7th meeting. Okay, so we'll That's have great. an update, got it. Great, thank you. And with the five seven. Um, Commissioner um, O'Brien chime in, but I'm comfortable uh, um, with May 7th, if there's going to, there should be plenty of time um, on that to have uh, the independent monitor report on the um, six month um, report. As you remember, we gave an extension to Win, Win Resorts um, <clears throat> so that the deadline was extended from the end of March to the end of April and they're all set. You saw right. that. Right, yeah, no, I think that date works. Good, all right, so we'll keep that on. Um, Workforce Development Grant, Director Griffin, how are you, Jill? I'm good, thank you. Um, I think this is something that can um, be pushed off. I don't know that we need to add it at this time. We'll keep it under review then, great, thank you. And then you have a following one, the Massachusetts Cultural Mitigation Program, RFP update. Um, I, I think the RFP has, um, I think we can also uh, maybe get an update um, much later, maybe okay. um, when they award the grants. Okay, so we'll keep that under review as well. Moving on to number seven, Commissioners Cameron and Commissioner um, O'Brien. I know that you were ready to go, I think, last time. Yes. I just, um, it's just timing when we'd like to discuss this issue. Does it make sense now or does it make sense uh, once we have more clarity on reopening casinos? Well, Commissioner um, Karen, you, you had um, some thought about this, that this might make sense to get this work done. Um, I had some conversation with uh, Commissioner Stebbins just in general about moving some things forward while we can because there is going to be a very busy time when we reopen the casinos. Um, so I, I don't know uh, if Commissioner Stebbins has a comment on this particularly or it's just one of these things we could move forward on if possible. But I recognize that the, you know, the casinos are not open right now. So there's not the same sense of urgency. So. It, it's really, uh, but it is true that they've all they've all agreed to um, your recommendations, or they've been um, at least briefed on them. Correct, the three licensees. Uh, they have they and they have all um, actually there. There was no disagreement as to um, there were a couple of uh, questions, and please, Commissioner Bryan, jump in. Uh, to, they needed a little clarity on a couple of things, which was provided at the meeting. So that meeting ended with with agreement with the three licensees. Yeah. The, the clarity was really, uh, everyone was on the same page in terms of substance, and it was really a question of wordsmithing to make sure that that was properly reflected. And then everyone agreed that that was in fact done. Um, mm -hmm. So everyone was in agreement the last time we met. Great. So what do you recommend, uh, Gail and Eileen, to take oh. care of this business? Um, for, the date that we're looking at now, 5-7 or, or the next one? Well, we've got the 23rd, and I guess then the following one is the 7th, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know that it would really make a lot of sense to have them both have the independent monitor and this on the same day. I wouldn't do it. So we would either do the 23rd or I would recommend, you know, the 21st, I guess, would be the one after the 7th. That's right. Yeah, maybe the 21st, Madam Chair. Okay. And then we've got a few things on the agenda. I'm just mindful of your, your point that we won't, don't want to have too many things on each meeting because these can, uh, they can be tough to be on a, a virtual meeting for hours. 
everybody should feel um, comfortable excusing themselves if they need to. <laughs> I, I just realized I can, I can see many of you and I can, um, but of course, uh, except for my fellow commissioners, you have to stick it out. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, item number eight, Dr. Lightbound. Uh, that can be um, left, um, you know, till we get closer to racing. Okay. Uh, so under and, review. Yep. And number the same nine. for number nine. Okay, excellent. And um, the same for number 10. Okay. And also for 11. Okay. And then um, I believe we can eliminate item 12. Um, that's the same as number 10. So we can leave um, the promo fund consideration number 10 and um, delete the number 12. Yeah, great, thank you. Thank you. Good. Now we're on to item number 13. Good morning, Mark. And um, I don't know if Teresa will be joining you. Is Mark on? I am, sorry. <laughs> that mute button. <laughs> Good morning. So Good this morning. is um, item number 13, the Game Sense Impact Report, which I, I know probably has taken a, a bit of a, a detour, but do you want to give an update? And of course, I, um, Elaine Driscoll's on this as well. It's part of her work. Good morning, Elaine. Yeah, so the, the, we, we have a meeting with KHJ, who um, is our contractor that's, that's leading this. Um, one essential component is that we want to include some uh, photographs that would be taken at the casino. So um, given the fact that the casinos are open, we haven't been able to um, initiate that critical piece of it. So um, we'll keep this as under review at this point until, um, until we're back up and running. Um, we do have a, a strong outline. I think much of the content is there and it's ready to, to go. Elaine, did you want to add anything? So I just wanted to add that so, but the good news is, is we're spending our time right now to continue to do what we can on it. So like Mark said, um, for the most part, the content is basically done. Um, and we are going to have a meeting with them this week um, just to discuss layout and as Mark already said um, the, the one issue is that we were in the process um, of setting up photo shoots at each property um, obviously uh, that's on hold but I still think we can continue to make progress um, so that we'd be able to move quickly um, once we're back in operation. Minister Zuniga are you, are you good with that? Yeah yeah, let's let's see what um, one 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 thing that I'm sure it'll uh, a report will have to will have to think about is some of the activities that they have been uh, doing themselves during this period. But we'll, we'll get to that when we when we get there. Excellent. We'll keep it under review, but know that um, progress is being made. Mark number fourteen. So number fourteen is the uh, Play My Way um, Category One update. Um, hold on one second, I'm sorry. Toggling back and forth between the uh, planning notes and, and the HD. Um, so the update um, quickly is that there's been a request to delay the implementation of Play My Way by our category one casinos. Um, Katrina and I had the opportunity to talk more and get additional detail with um, MGM and Encore. Um, it's a, they're requesting a delay of, of one year. Um, the reason being is, is largely associated or exclusively associated with um, their need to, to suspend operations um, at this time. Um, I would like to combine um, the two items of uh, 14 and 15. Um, and bring those before the, the commission to provide you with some additional details of what what the rationale is um, and plans to launch this um, at a later date. Um, it, I would like to get that on the commission agenda um, as soon as we can. I think it's a timely timely issue that um, is relevant to everything that's going on. 
Karen, do you recommend that this go on the 23rd? Yes, I do. Okay. Is this the May, uh, May 23rd or? April, April 23rd. April, April. okay. The, yeah, yes. both May, May 21st. Both Mark and Katrina have uh, briefed me on all of this and the um, and sort of the reasoning behind the, the request. It all uh, seems very reasonable given the circumstances they're in and given the financial uh, component of this. So my expectation is that it uh, would be uh, a reasonable thing to do on the, tw on the 23rd, um, Thursday. Yep, sounds good. Good, thank you. Um, item number 16, Mark, the data storage. Yeah, I would like to keep this item under review right now. We've been making progress. Um, we had a fantastic collaborative meeting with DPH, Chia, um, and MGC. Katrina is, is really involved in this project as well. Um, we have another meeting, um, uh, I believe tomorrow, um, to pull together a core group, um, but just not quite enough for me to, um, to put this out there um, just yet. Between okay, and, and how about number 17? Is it same? Um, That's number, on section 97. Okay, actually, I, I apologize. Uh, this is the challenge of toggling back and forth. I was speaking of number 17. Oh, okay. Um, and number 16, um, I would like to keep under review as well. There's been some delays in, in launching the, the revised website, um, research page of our website, um, and uh, the data access project is, is linked to that. So let's just keep that under review as well. Okay. Um, number 18, that's on me. Um, I need to put a, a, a personal deadline, but we'll keep it under review now. Okay, Bruce, I'll set that deadline with you. Okay. You can hold me accountable. Thank you. And vice uh, versa. Item number uh, 19. I think we can, <coughs> sorry, keep that under review. Okay. Oh, the six month public safety report, that would include Mark as well and uh, commissioners uh, Cameron and O'Brien. Number 20. Yes. Um, I can hop in here, um, unless Commissioners Cameron or O'Brien, you, you want to. Um, it's ready to go. Um, it will, I, I, or it's close to being ready. I would recommend the, the first meeting in May, if we could. Um, I just want to confirm a few things with Christopher um, and assure that we have a, a slide deck that um, is ready for, for the commission. Commissioner Cameron, do you want to add? No, I, I think, um, you know, Mark has done a very good job coordinating with Christopher and Christopher is in a position where he's able to uh, complete reports in a timely manner. So uh, I think that this is one of those items that we absolutely could um, could uh, talk about, have a meeting, and and um, and move on. So I think um, the first meeting in May sounds appropriate. Okay, and uh, Commissioner O'Brien. Uh, no, I would agree with that, and I think topically it fits in fine with what's on the seventh already. Say again. I said I, I would agree, and it topically I think fits with. Oh, okay. What's on Excellent. the seventh? Yes. Good point. And you're all set with respect to the external uh, law enforcement officers, the chief and uh, Everett and the surrounding communities. Have they seen this or your process is complete? Yes, that it's gone through the review and feedback period with right. um, with our local law enforcement partners, as well as a research review. People. Okay, yeah. And I knew you had met, but they don't need to see it in advance too, or do they? Um, we will release it uh, to them um, at the same time before, uh, before the, the uh, meeting. Um, okay. From what I can recall, there was very little substantive change um, after our, our meeting with them to, to okay. review the graphic. Great, thank you. Thanks for explaining the process. All right, so that will be for um, the seventh. Um, 
Karen, number 21 is uh, a compliance items update. It's been kind of a... Yeah, that's sort of been on hold as far as even what the commission wants to see as part of that, given the casinos aren't open right now. I think we can keep that under review. Uh, and then once they open, I'd uh, like some feedback from the commissioners as far as what they want to see for that type of item on a regular basis. Yeah, I think that that's probably going to um, warrant a good, it, it'll be a public meeting, of course, but it might be something that we really want to chew on and together, um, it's kind of an atypical commission public meeting, maybe just put that as a singular item at the right time to really think about how we're going to build that compliance department, if you will, or division or oversight, you know, whether it's internal team or whatever, what it's what you're recommending and what we need to really think about. Exactly. Yeah. We can we can figure out the right format for that discussion going forward. Um, and Commissioner Zuniga, on your uh, good analysis. You know, these um let's just if you we're talking about 22 as I take it. Um, yes. let's keep you. on the review. I don't I know we have postponed these for a number of reasons and and now the New England market, as any other market, is really upended would be another reason. But uh, let me uh, update what I have um, and, uh, and, and get back to the group as to when, when this might be a good discussion. Of course, this would now begin to include data on um, you know, casino closures. Which, which, is, which was not the original intention of this analysis, but it's a relevant one. So, and, and I mean all around us. But um, let's just keep it on the review and I'll do the updates and get back to the group. Okay, thank you. Um, our quarterly reports, uh, uh, Karen and Joe. Joe, do you know when we're next up for a quarterly report? Well, right now, you know, we normally start scheduling them the second half of the month after the quarter and sort of the first half of that following month. So we're about due to start them, you know, at the end of this month, beginning of May. Uh, given the circumstances, I'm not sure what we're really going to get out of a quarterly report, um, you know, other than, um, you know, we know what uh, revenues are and so on. So I don't know if this is something we just want to defer to later or if we want to try to get it in now with sort of a minimal amount of information. The quarterly report, Joe, remind me, would be for which, um, the exact months? This would be for uh, first quarter of this year. So January, February, March. So we would get that actually it would be through almost you know the full of March up to the, the suspension of operations on March 15th and these are statutorily required correct Todd the quarterly reports it may be a regulation but it, well yeah. it's definitely in a regulation I think it's actually referenced somewhere in the statute too but we can double check okay. on that well um, if, if it's I understand why it doesn't it's not going to be great to have to impose that on our licensees while they are working on big issues. So I'm deferring to all of you. Uh, do we, do we um, just wait and have them report in, um, on those going forward and maybe combine, um, you know, when things resume, when operations resume, combine reporting then, or do we take care of past homework now? So that's really the choice. Mr. Stebbins, do you have a thought? Um, you know, I don't want to see us slip too far behind. I guess my question would be whether the licensees have the team available to pull the information okay. that we're regular, regularly accustomed to seeing. I mean, if you know, their, their point person on purchasing is no longer an active member of the team, trying to get some of those numbers might be uh, a hindrance to getting a good report. So yes, Joe, I, have, I have a call scheduled with Seth uh, for later this week, and I'm trying to set one up uh, with Jackie Crum as well over at Encore. Um, just this was going to be one of the topics of discussion of sort of what kind of 
uh, horsepower do they have to actually uh, pull this thing together? And secondly, um, what can we get out of it? Um, I know that in the past we did at one point when Encore was going through their suitability review, uh, they we did defer one of their quarterly reports, at least in front of the commission. They submitted it to us, a paper report, but we didn't have the presentation till later. So that might be something we want to consider. We just get a paper report for the commission to review, and we can have a presentation once things are back up and running. There's a bunch of ways we can do this, but I'll, I'll follow up with the licensees this I'm week. I, I don't think we want to impose pressure. Commissioner Zuniga? Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a good option, um, you know, to explore as Joe suggests. I um, I was just going to make the point that we don't have to follow the same format of reports. We we don't have to, we should not expect the same charts necessarily, or the same numbers, and there may be some value at least whether it's paper or presentation or both. In just saying, you know, we did comply with, you know, they did comply with it. Uh, in these extraordinary circumstances, uh, the report looks different, but here's an update on the closures, some of which we already know, but it's good to, you know, um, to at least mention it because they are within the time frame, um, and, you know, and just sort of go from there. They, they don't have to be the same type of reports. Anyway, just another sort of aspect I'm throwing out there. And I, there might be some value. I'm very, I, I'm of course concerned about their bandwidth, but there might be some value in knowing what did our licensees look like right before closure. Those statistics, those facts, that data might be helpful. I agree with Commissioner Zuniga. There's, you know, we do not have to stick with a formula here, um, and we need to be very sensitive to bandwidth. But there might be, you know, come the new, uh, what is the new world and the new operations, we might be questioned, what did it look like? And it would be perhaps very important to have that data in front of us. Commissioner O'Brien, I can see that you might be. No, I'm echoing both what um, Bruce and Enrique said, which is um, I want to be mindful of what their bandwidth is, mm -hmm. but they might be doing this also as a part of their projections. And so I think what it really is, is you know Joe reaching out to them and saying, you know, what could you produce in short order? And to Karen's point, to the extent that we check it off, it's also one less thing that, you know, we or the licensees need to deal with when we come out and start trying to reopen. And so I think if there can be some modified version of it, I think that's probably the way to go. And it probably means finding out from each one of them what they're capable of doing. Yeah. Commissioner Cameron? Yeah, I, I agree. I was just going to suggest that we, that call that Joe, one of them he has scheduled, one of them he's going to schedule, I think, that will inform us as to their capabilities. And I like the idea of exploring some kind of a, a version that may not be as, as uh, complete as it usually is due to their staffing issues. Um, so I think we could make that decision after hearing more from Joe. So uh, Karen and Joe, will you just work on um, getting some feedback on that? And then we'll keep it under review for now, and it would be for all three, Joe, or um, they're all coming up? Yeah, they all, they, you know, I mean, they all have the, the first quarter. Um, typically, we tried in the past not to schedule all three on one right. day. Um, and, you know, some of the, the licensees could get the information, particularly the financial information, a little sooner than others based on their internal controls and other things. So, um, but yeah, it would be all three. Yeah, so it'd be all three, and, and of course it would be a different report anyway, not as lengthy. And you know, maybe we shoot for the um, the second week in May uh, meeting from May twenty first. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's probably the best the best time to do it. Oh, all right, and then we'll um, we'll have that that information, in it, and everybody can check it off their box. I'll set then moving on to number uh, twenty four. Um, Joe and Mary, and before we get started, um, we have our own hero among us in Mary Thurlow. Uh, I, I credit Elaine uh, just go for um, there she is uh, for um, you know, highlighting the great work that Mary has done um, with her 
uh, her fellow quilters to produce uh, masks that are so essential to our frontline medical professional. Um, we really uh, are lucky to have you among us in so many ways, but particularly we are happy to highlight that now. Uh, it's been a gift that you've given the community. Um, and um, I feel selfish highlighting it on behalf of the, the uh, Gaming Commission because then I feel like I'm a little bit of a part of it. I only wish I had your talent. Mm. So thank you, Mary. Uh, do you want to report on uh, community mitigation? And, and I should say in your heart too. Um, if, uh, um, either Joe or Mary, who wants us to start where we are in community mitigation? I know Bruce and Enrique, you've been involved too. Um, a whole lot of people. So we are we are proceeding apace on on community mitigation fund. Um, we have done our all of our initial reviews of the applications and have gone through that. We are now uh, I should say we meaning Mary is now uh, and Tanya uh, are setting up uh, meetings with all of our, our grant app or all of our applicants. Um, which will be starting um, the week after next and running really through the end of May. So we meet with each one, we go over questions that we have on their applications, give them an opportunity to supplement their applications, answer our questions, and then we work up our recommendations. So we are expecting to have our recommendation in early, mid-June, um, and hopefully for the Commission's consideration at the end of June. Now, with that said, we have absolutely no idea what's going to happen in the next weeks and months. And, uh, you know, but um, our target is just to keep, you know, keep the program going, keep it moving and keep, uh, you know, and get these awards done by the end of the fiscal year. That's our goal. And uh, we're so far, we're sticking to it. Mary, do you want to chime in? I don't want to put you on the spot. Can you unmute? I can do it this way. I, I, oh, can I unmute you? Here we are. There you go. Yeah, no, we seem to be making good progress. Um, and, you know, as Joe said, we're still waiting to hear from, uh, let's say, the licensees still need to respond to our requests for information on their, uh, their on the applications. And uh, we're just trying to plug ahead. Good. Thank you. Um, and, and thank you to Tanya, who's joined that team. Uh, a utility yes. player, Tanya is, so thank you. Um, do you have anything to add there? No, thank you. Okay. Sorry, I was, I was just going to mention that um, um, as part of that future discussion uh, on the community mitigation, um, we're going to have to make some, um, you know, to have a discussion about the revenue side um, of, of, that, of that fund, even though it's, it's well funded so far and we've been very conservative in terms of um, Approving monies with enough balance, the lack of operation of the casinos has an impact on that fund. So that will have to be also That'll part of the discussion. Part of a, a, our discussion, absolutely. If we need to have that discussion in advance, um, Enrique, let's um, let's discuss that and get it uh, onto a commission meeting in advance, uh, more substantively. Okay. Well, yeah, so the, the, you know, the, um, the 2020 Community Mitigation Fund, we only included funds that were generated through the end of calendar year 2019. So that money has all been generated and has already been put aside into the fund for the, for the applicants for 2020. It's going to be the 2021 money where, uh, you know, we're, we're taking a hit from the middle of uh, March until whenever the casinos reopen. And, and we'll remind, remind me, Joe, the, um, when, we, when we looked at that budget for the 2021, was the timing kind of the beginning of the year? Or just remind me when we looked at that. 
So for the 2021 Community Mitigation Fund, it will be all of the revenues generated in calendar year 2020. And so then we, when we, but, but when we establish the, or look at the guidelines that you propose and everything, when do we typically do that? Is it the end of, of the, at the beginning of the new year, right after? Yeah, so af after we award 2020, we start our, our revisions to the guidelines and we usually bring those in front of the commission initially September, October timeframe to get any of the questions the commission may have. And then, you know, we finalize them through November and, you know, usually we come out with final guidelines at the beginning of December. So usually it's that, about that September timeframe where we're estimating how much money we'll have available. Seems to me that that, that revenue discussion can be just, you know, we'll, we'll have new numbers. Uh, obviously, we always have new numbers. These are definitely newer numbers. So, um, for right now, we'll just stay on the course and we will mark this, continue to keep it under review, or do we need to think about uh, a date or discussion of the, of the grants themselves? Okay. I was thinking we yeah. might want to have something on the, com the first commission meeting in June and we can have an initial discussion there and then hopefully uh, the final uh, big discussion at the uh, second meeting in June. I can see Mary Ann's looking at her calendar. That looks like June 4th. Okay. So I think at that point, at June 4th, we might not have our recommendations completely finalized, but I think that would be a good point to say, hey, this is how many applications we have, you know, give an update at that point and then do a, do the big uh, meeting, which, you know, that's a, if you all remember, that's a, a generally a, a couple of three hour affair uh, going through each application and, uh, and all of that. It's, um, it's a bit arduous. If I could just chime in, I know you can't see me because I've got so many screens going. Um, it's, and it has been in the past that we've broken it up into a couple of meetings. Just And this year we have 37 applications, which is almost double from previous years. So we may just want to take into consideration um, if there's any, we may have to discuss if there's any priority applications or um, uh, if, if we're going to need to break them down into more than one meeting for the final discussions. So that makes good sense too. So we can, we can um, assess that in our agenda setting meetings as we go along. But right now it looks like it's not a May discussion. It would be beginning the, the first discussion to commence in June. Yeah. Excellent. There she is again. Thank you. Um, any questions for anyone here? I'm moving it along, but I'm not. My my fellow commissioners, lean in if you um, want to say something. Uh, Bruce, on the update on the way, um, that's still on. Um, you said table though, so we we. Yeah, I I think I think for the time being we can take it off. Yeah. Take it off the agenda setting. Okay. And then. Um, uh, Dr. Lightbound, this was on hold as well. Does that mean the same thing or is it uh, under review? Um, we might want to try to aim for the 5-7 meeting. Um, they're going to want some clarity on what their season would look like. So um, hopefully by then we'll know a little bit more. Okay. Any other items that you um, want to add? I didn't. I didn't ask each. So now uh, this is the opportunity for any member of the staff. Karen, are there other items that we need to think about scheduling for a commission meeting? Not that I know of, but if anyone on the staff has one, please chime in. Yeah. Well, I do. I do believe we um, we should have a budget discussion at some point for fiscal year twenty one. Uh, wait, twenty one. Right. If we're already thinking about uh, June meetings, well, let's just put it in the, you know, in the notes for now, uh, 
it may be that we come back to two, uh, but but uh, at, at least one uh, one item that has to do a budget discussion, Marianne. So we'll have budget discussion, and, and uh, Derek, does June work for you? Or do, uh, for right now, if we have, of yes. course, as any item comes up, we always have flexibility. Mm -hmm. But right now, to put a, a placeholder for June 4th? Yes. That works, Derek? Okay, good. Thanks. Any other items? Barring none, um, do we have any commissioner update, anything that I um, we've missed discussing today that still fits within our general agenda? Okay, do I have a, first off, everybody have an excellent day. There's a little bit of sunshine. So uh, get out, take good care of yourselves and, um, and your families and, and, and be safe and we'll, We'll be convening again as a as a big group um, as a commission next week, and I know that people are enjoying the town hall so much. So thank you, Karen, for uh, for that effort. And I know today I'm joining the um, HR um, office hours, so I'm looking forward to seeing folks then too. So everyone, take care. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. Chair votes yes. Thank you, Shara. 5 0. Take good care of those little ones. Bye. Aye. Bye bye.